Welcome to the highlight show for Group 8 from the second stage of Ultimate Pool, the Masters. Scott Gillespie will take on Carl Sutton in our first match. Gareth Potts will take on Matt Brearley in our second match. The winners will play each other for a place in the quarterfinals. Let's get straight into our first match then. Scott Gillespie taking on Carl Sutton. The first six frames were very high quality with all clearances from the break and they shared them for 3-3. We join Carl at the table with a chance after a tactical exchange in frame 7. Well, there's a double and he would be going into the, the yellow, but if you don't get it, you're leaving it open for Scott. I think he has to go for it. No, it's not much much safety here now. Big shot. Yeah, massive shot. I feel like this is cash ball in the frame, really. Oh, he doesn't even go for it. Probably the right shot in the end, to be honest. I quite like that, yeah. Saying that, if Scott Gillespie plays this right, he could pot the yellow with... He could flick off the red and pot the yellow. Now, he would leave Carl a shot, but it's tough, this. But I think he, he can play the loss of turn here. That's what he's looking at, I think. You just don't want to leave this yellow hanging if you don't if you don't get it. You've got to make sure it goes off the table like that. I think right, he's it's got not the worst result, yeah, actually. Yeah, I think he's got away with it. I mean, Carl's got an across the table to get it to pot it. What are you gaining from that there? I don't know if you can control the white to get your next one. You might just drop onto this again and just stick him, leave him stuck over the yellow. Next next big mistake is, is the key to this frame. Whoever, whoever trips up here will lose this frame. Well, I'm, I'm not convinced. I don't think he's happy with it. This red goes to the left, left centre. Might even go to the top. No, Carl has the face of a man who, look, who knows he's made a mistake there. Not 100% sure what he was trying, but it certainly wasn't that. Yeah. Scott Gillespie, chance to go 4-3 in front. That's all this match could come down to. It could honestly come down to this frame. That's how tight this match has been. Just the close, the closest to the top right of the table, where it's causing a little bit of grief here. As he's not currently got a way to land nicely on it. I mean, <coughs> if all else fails here, he can play the the red into the centre, come back across the table, red to the top right, and then he's got a big pocket down here with the yellow. Could even play it now if he wants. I probably would leave it till last. Guarantee yourself a shot on the eight ball. Because this, this red's unmissable down to the bottom bottom pocket. Yeah, that's nicely played. So two was that. Never mind leaving himself these sorts of mid-range pots. Scott Gillespie, these are bread and butter. This is the lead back. Crunched into the middle of the pocket. Eight ball. Eight ball was Just close. Not. 
And a good break from Scott Gillespie. That's almost been the difference between the two at the moment. Scott's definitely breaking the better. Maybe not just in terms of contact and all the rest of it, certainly in terms of result. Yeah, I think it, <coughs> if this yellow passes the eight pole, this is about as routine as it can get for someone like Scott Gillespie. He won't want to be taking the reds. And the eight pole looks like the yellow does pass, so great chance here for Scott to restore his two frame advantage. So just looking ahead at the draw for the weekend. Winner of this group. So this is Group D, effectively, Group D of the last 32. So winner of this, I think, will go on to face Arthur and Dad. Oh, yep, yeah, Arthur and Dad. So I've already confirmed we've got John Rowe versus. Jake Dillon Newell of what a run he's had. Yeah. Knocked out Mick Hill. And then knocked out Carl Morris in <laughs> dramatic circumstances, if I remember. I think Carl had a golden opportunity to uh, to win that match. But John Rowe, what a, what, a, what a tournament John Rowe's had. Yeah. He's been brilliant. So that should be a great match. Half, half and down, as we mentioned, this is the winner of tonight's group. Yeah, I think for, for John and for Jake in particular, Saturday represents an enormous opportunity. Yeah. You know, if, you, if, if you offered both of them at the start of this tournament, Jake, you'll play John Rowe for a place in the semi-finals of this event. John, you'll play Jake for a place in the semi-final of this event. They'd have both snapped your hand off. Because yeah. it means they've both played really well and they will both fancy that match. With total respect to both players, they will both fancy winning that match. Oh, absolutely. And if you look at look at the groups that they've come through, I mean, John Raw, dramatic finish against Craig Waddingham to knock him out opening round. And then he enters a group of death containing um, containing Shane Thompson, Jack Whelan. You know, but you look at both of those as the heavy favourites. And John just sort of goes, no, thanks, lads. I think I'm, I I'm going to take this one. And uh, yeah, he's just sort of coasted along nicely, hasn't he? Jake, obviously, uh, he's, I mean, you say he's an underdog in it. Jake's as probably as professional as you can be without being a professional, isn't he? He's such a, yeah. such a classy player. And Scott does pick up his two frame advantage once again. I know that almost, just from speaking to Scott, he, he struggled to devote as much as he would have liked, just in terms of headspace, in terms of just physical presence to the pool scene because of everything that was going on last year. It was a huge year personally for him. I almost think it's, uh, you know, heading into 2023, it's now that stuff's a little bit more settled, I suppose, off the table, that there's a little bit more in terms of concentration on it. Yeah, absolutely. When, you know, when you've got those... <laughs> that's probably an unfair term to say it's distractions but when you've got those big things in your life going on off the table it can oh, be course, difficult yeah. to focus on, on, on the uh, on the table And it's not even a case of difficulty isn't it it's just not your focus yeah yeah, absolutely Yeah, but it's it's quite clear to see that Scott has has refocused and he's set his target of winning a title this year and well Ooh. I think Carl's got away with it here I, I think he's got away with this I'm not sure whether he can just nip enough of this yellow if he can then it's looking ominous it's a really difficult opening shot for Carl Sutton yeah, and he can get to it oh, oh that's not ideal well, though that's a sloppy one well they want that back he's still okay but he's now got work to do to get back on that yellow yeah he's got to play a shot he can land on it you can see there the two placements of the queue. He can land in either of those spots and still make the yellow. Might choose to get on it now. Might play the plant. And you can just stun back up to the right-hand side of the table. He guaranteed a shot at it. He won't, he won't, he'll want to get back on it as early as he can because he won't want to be messing about getting on it later on in the finish. He'll want to look to punish Carl here. Yeah, 
it's going to look. Looks like he's going to look to use this one that's near the middle pocket to just drift up the table. Obviously, as I've said that, he's, he's not going to go that way, so <laughs> thanks a lot for that, Scott. Well, it's, it's looking like he's going to leave it to let, leave it to last, and it's, uh, it's a it's a risky strategy if it doesn't work out because he's going to have to get he's going to have to get perfect perfect angle on this to land on it. He's nice here. He can just run through. He's come far enough across. Just see there if he lands just above the line in the middle pocket. He's got sight to that yellow. Yeah, he doesn't want to be doing anything with this cue ball. He just wants to the natural angle. Let, it, let the cue ball do the work because he doesn't want to be playing with any sort of pace. Yeah, that's fine. For 40 weeks now, the overhead's been playing with my head. <laughs> but I think he's okay. Good. I feel like this could be a bit of a swing in the match. You know, five, four, six, three. It's a big, big frame. This. He's had better eight balls than this, though. It, it, look, it looks all right on paper, but he's, he's just awkward bridging. That granite, mate. Yeah. Never missing those. Never in doubt. A break clearance in the next frame made it a four-frame advantage and a seven-three lead for Scott Gillespie. Carl made a break clearance of his own to make it 7-4 and made it 7-5 when he pounced on a mistake from Scott Gillespie. We join him with a break and the time running out. Cut break again for Carl. Again, hits it well. Again, good split. Oh, that yellow just causing a problem on the left side will annoy him. Because that was looking very nice until a moment ago. Until now. I'll go. I think we're going 7 6, Steve. It looks like it at this stage. Just never, ever write any. You just can't write, write them off, can you? Carl Sutton was dead and buried. He was gone. He was absolutely gone. He's back in the mix. 7-6. Massive break. Oh, gets a ball. Gets a ball. And have a look at this layout. Have a look at these. Massive chance. Three minutes 20 remaining. Oh, this is just hold yourself together time now, Scott. They all go. What a match this has been. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Standards pretty much as, <coughs> as high as you can get. never over until it's over. No, Scott's hold. last frame at the table taught us that. Two and a half to go. Yeah, there's still work to do here. This is not a formality. 
he's not he's, he's not happy. He wanted yeah. to be straight on this, but he's still okay. He's have to just come back for this 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 uh, yellow again. Oh, he's played a good shot there. He's hampered though. Oh wow. He's hampered. Oh my word. He can only he, all he can do is just drop this in, leave it at range. He's played a very good shot there. Yeah. Very good shot. One big pot. One big pot. Crunches it. It's there. Has a chance to line it up. This for a spot in the group final. Matt Brealey or Gareth Potts await. And Scott Gillespie gets over the line. Puff of the cheeks from Goobsy. Halts the comeback of Carl Sutton. A super effort. But it's Scott who just scrapes over the line as we bid goodbye to Carlos. On to our second match of the night. Legend of the game, Gareth Potts, one of the big favourites, taking on Matt Brearley. And we're going to join it right at the start of the match. Big match in front of him. Gareth Potts for his place, for a place rather, in the next round. Where he'll face Scott Gillespie in the group final. Super break to kick things off for Brearley. Just saw at the top of your pitch there, Gareth Potts gets himself comfortable. He's not expecting a shot here. Super opening break. There is the golden boy. Was here on Monday night, thoroughly successfully. That's a lovely little shot through the gate from Matt Brearley, Steve Jameson, Will Caldwell with you on the comms this evening. It's going to be an interesting little match this because like I was saying before, Matt Brealy has certainly just gone under the radar in this tournament. Gareth obviously the the standout favourite you'd you would have to say. But Matt Brealy's uh, been around the game for a long time. He has and you take a look at what he did in his group and you think all right we've got every shout here because matt Brady took down simon fitzsimmons and neil raybone back to back eight five and then seven six over the razor but if you can beat those two caliber of players back to back on the same night you can beat anybody and anybody just happens to be gareth potts tonight he got through Jordan Bradley and Elliot Glover in his group. But he was given a bit of a scare by Jordan Bradley, the well, the rookie. Well. As uh, Matt runs aground. It's a tricky little positional shot, and he just glanced off the lowest red. He wanted to miss that and hit the other red full in the face, and he's on the yellow and home and hosed. But now he's got to pull out a real shot here. Yeah, this isn't just a case of hit the yellow, this is a case of you've got to pot it because there's no safe safe space on the table from Gareth. Two cushions looking for the clip back. What Great effort. A shot. What a shot, Matt. Congratulations, you snookered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so tough. Oh, that's one of the shots of the tournament for me so far. What a shot that is. If you can get out from here, this will be, well... <laughs> Well, this will rival the real deals clearance this that we had a couple of months will, ago, oh, didn't we? Wow. What have you got for us, Matt? One special shot. He needs to find another. He's Go. close. Wow. Oh, he was close. Eyes lit up for a second. But Gareth Potts will come to the table. Yeah, the social media team was scrambling then. We were scrambling. But by social media team, you mm -hmm. mean yourself. I mean me. <laughs> yeah. Ar army rolling to the laptop there was Will called up. Yeah, they keep us on our toes, these players. But well, that would that would have been 
an unbelievable out. But he'll be so frustrated, Matt, because that was a great chance to you know, just get settled, you know, get one up early. You always get the feeling when you see a player like Matt take on a player like Gareth. They almost need to be on it right from the gun because you know what you're going to get from Gareth. You get such a high level, very, very seldom drops it. And Matt is capable of reaching those levels. Make absolutely no mistake. That's why he's here. But he maybe does so on a slightly less consistent basis. And that's the big key, is can you produce in this match what your absolute best is? Yeah, Gareth's not going to give you many chances. Got a very, very consistent break. And when he's in, he doesn't miss many. These reds weren't super easy. Still got a slightly awkward one. And he doesn't look like he's got the angle that he'd want here. It'll be very interesting to see what Gaz does from here. He's not usually one to leave a double. Shot he's played here. Is he in off? Oh, wow. Well. Well. Well, he was always flirting with danger, wasn't he, by choosing to leave it till last. I, th I did think it, he had an angle earlier on in the finish to get it out, and he chose not to. You know, someone as good as as good as good Gareth, you know, they can land on anything, but. Well, a, a huge let off for Matt Brearley. Potts will try and park that and quickly look to stick it in the rear view. We're just on serve, he'll be saying. Puts a little bit extra into that break, I think, and it's dry. It'll be a very frustrated Gareth Potts back in his chair here. Really, first poke again. Really will want to capitalise on that mistake from Gareth. The frame he thought he'd thrown away, but he'll want to take the advantage here if he can. Yeah, he certainly will. It's one key shot you you think here yeah, if you can use this red to. Uh, Move the other red that's on the right on rail. Well, he's got second prize. He's moved the yellow that was blocking the path of it, but I'm not sure whether he's got another shot, so he's gonna he may have to take it now. Big shot. Yeah, how about this for a tester? He played that well. Cool, what a pot. All right, Matt Breeley's here, everyone. 
he's here to play. Yeah, he's certainly here. He's, you, you can just tell he's not quite settled himself yet. Cue ball's running a little bit, but... If you can't settle after a shot like that, I'm not sure you ever will. Super pot down the rail. Yeah, I know these pockets play big, but no need for any of that there. That's clean. do is the yellow going to block the pocket no yeah nice little shot there to use the yellow hold the cue ball be a really lovely finish this from Matt if he can get out he want to keep Gareth in his seat if he can this is a tester now down the rail for 2-0 Super. That's a really good finish from Matt, really. A break clearance, reverse clearance, and break clearance run put Matt Brearley 5 0 in front. We join Gareth with the break in frame six. Cue ball. Oh, he's okay, just. Well, he's got a ball. He has got a first shot. But look at this split. It's far from easy. Far from easy. Yeah, it's just crazy how the difference two days can make. Monday night, he looked flawless. You know, taking away nothing away from him. He's not really done anything wrong here in this match. He's made one mistake. Yeah, he, he's done literally nothing wrong at all. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? It is crazy. He managed to get a yellow. Wasn't initially sure that he could do that, but here he goes. I think so. Not sure he was picking a gap there or whether he was trying to play a cannon, but he's still okay. It's a nice one. visits the table it needed to be feels crazy to say that Gareth Potts is stopping the rot but after going in off at nil nil that's his first visit to the table and it's come at five nil down Gareth won the next frame as well to make it 5-2 before the pair traded reverse clearances to make it six frames to three. We join them halfway through frame 10 after a tactical exchange. Yeah, this match has flown by. Well, mistake from Matt Brealey. To, to be honest with you, if you're Gareth, you're looking at this, 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 this table and thinking, hmm... Where's the finish? Yeah. Do I? How much do I want this? Well, I don't think he's got much option but to go f go game here. That's a nice shot. <clears throat> Gotta be careful here, though. He's going to have to use this red that he's on to move the other red. He could end up with no shot here. Got to play this right.
massive shot for Gareth Potts. Well, he's, he's played it. He's played it hard deliberately to to ensure that he doesn't snooker himself. But the red's still not not out. Don't think he doubles anywhere either. Uh, he's got the angle here. I think yeah, he can he, get he, into I think it. he can get into it. One, two, three. It might double now. You know, this might double. I think it's his only shot. I think it goes. I think it's his only shot. Not to be. No, it's still it's okay. Uh, Yellows are still very difficult. Yeah, but I th I th not sure on the overhead whether the yellow passes to the bottom left. I think it does. Yeah, it does. Matt Breeland might take it now into the middle and just work his way up the table. This is a huge finish. If he can get these, this will all but book his place in the next round. All right, there's still time on the on the clock, but Gareth Potts would have to win five in a row. Ooh, that's okay. Well, that's perfect. He's now got an easy, an easy yellow to bump out this one that's on the rail. He can got two chances now. He can use use this yellow to move it. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Yeah, it was a tough. It was a tough one for Gareth because he had no choice when when he got ball in hand. He had to go game, and the the layout was was so hard. And he did all the hard work and opened everything up. All right, Matt's had to play a couple of good shots to get over the line in this frame, but this looks a formality now. Just wipes his feet a little bit. the 15 second shot clock we go how much more will we see of it that really has played superbly tonight he's been tremendous yeah I take nothing away from him he's been outstanding cool, that wobbled well. a little bit but he's there 7-3 well. oh well well Gareth won the next two frames to pull it back to seven frames to five, but the time is running out and Matt Brearley has the break. Oh, it's dry. Well, well, well. Hello. Now then, look at the state of the layout again though. Gareth has to go be, has to be the aggressor. Big shot needed. Oh, well. Missed pot. Oh, well. That's the match right there. It should be. Oh, Signa. It should be. Tough shot, that, for Gareth. Neither colour set is particularly nice here at all. No, but Matt doesn't have to do... He doesn't have to do anything, does he? He just has to pot a few balls. All right, I don't think there's quite enough time to run the match. Oh, there is enough... To Oh, my word, what are we watching here? Well, you can't miss those. All he has to do is pop the red. That could be a huge moment. Gareth doesn't have really enough time here, you wouldn't think. That's pretty good. Well, it's as good as you can get. He's on, to the, red, he's on the red to the middle. Plants at the top of the table, is it? Remember, Gareth has the next break. That's key. 
this is still not simple. He needs to be leaving. He, he needs to be get get these gone. He needs to be 30 seconds left. We know That's we can do it in there. We know we can do it. 50 seconds. He's going to have to run across the table twice here. Oh, he's gone into it. Oh, my God. Where's he's not in off, is he? Oh. Well, for the second time in the match, Gareth Fox goes in off and he concedes. Matt Brearley is through. What a performance. Straight on to our group final. Matt Brearley will take on Scott Gillespie as they battle it out for a place in the quarterfinals. Scott won the first two frames with clearances from the break before Matt responded with one of his own to make it two frames to one. And we join Scott with the break. tough for Scott Gillespie getting kicked in off like that. Matt Brearley first chance in frame number four. It's a good chance at first glimpse. Key shot will be the red on the left side rail. Could take it now. I think he'd have wanted the angle off this red to potentially develop it. He doesn't have that luxury, so he will take it now, and it will be the double. And he's played it well. And a good bit of insurance there down the bottom end of the table, knew the red was always waiting, bottom right. Yeah, good response from Matt, this. Would have liked an easier last red. Just gonna have to come around the angles here to make sure he doesn't snooker himself, but should be okay. Relatively small gap to hit. Red's good, but oh, that's the gap. That's what he had to be careful of. Now I think he potted that thin, which meant the cue ball ran a little bit more than it should have. If he pots that in the heart of the pocket, I think he's on the eight ball. Yeah, it was a shot before, Steve. He, he's he's over hit the, the second to last red, which has just left a harder, a harder last red. And... Uh, yeah, that was always the danger. So, what's he? Has he got another big shot in the locker? Well, he's already pulled out a blinder tonight. Needs another. Not to be. It was close, you know. Yeah, of he had to go really, really close to that yellow. Too close. In the end. Is Scott going to play? one of these yellows down to the bottom right, I wonder. <laughs> Looks like it. Executed 
very nicely. The other yellow passes to the top right. Scott Gillespie in ship shape. Just a bit of a, a live scores update from all the other big matches going on in the other big sports at the moment. It's a, it's a huge day, really, um, in the British sporting calendar in particular. I'm sure, like, well, like I have and like Will has, that you might have a couple of screens open, but got Mark Selby 10 6 up in the snooker at the Crucible against John Higgins. Manchester City, a 1-0 up against Arsenal in the Premier League title decider. Scott Gillespie about to go 3-1 up against Matt Brealey. Yeah, some big scores. Anthony Miguel, I think he's 10-6 up on. See you are here, if I've got that correct. So pretty close, I'd say, yeah. No practicing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, big frame to win this for Scott. Mistake from Matt, <clears throat> which you didn't see coming. That could be pivotal. The pair traded clearances over the next four frames. Scott Gillespie maintaining his two frame advantage. Matt Brilly has the break 5 3 behind now. Huge break. Cue balls, okay. Yeah, cue balls not bad here. Yeah, got this yellow at the rail. At first glance, I think yellows are the op are the best option. Could go reds, but don't see it. Tough opener. I think he's got to take the yellows. Yeah, it calls extension. It all depends on if he can... Well, he's going to take yellows. Had to, really. Another shift first shot. Now this just unlocks the rest of them. Yeah, the only one that might be a problem. is the one just above the yellow above the cue ball now. The sort of left of the little triangle, if you like. Don't think it has what you call a natural pocket. Doesn't go to the left middle, doesn't go to the top right. May play short position and take it top left. Yeah, I think but he needs to be absolutely dead straight on the yellow on the rail. Yeah, I think he's okay here. He could each, he could actually even play on it now if he wants. Got the angle too. But nice, no, he's, he's perfect. Just drive back. Yeah, it's a well judged shot. Doesn't want to leave the shot, it wants to. Yeah, that's absolutely. Well, well. Took his eye off the pot. That's a big surprise. 
Oh, that's huge. I was not expecting that. No, I'll be interested to see how Scott manages this frame now because he needs to Well, that yellow has to come off the table. There's no doubt about yeah, it. But it's just whether he chooses to play a skill shot, which I know that he, he, he does like that sort of shot, or whether he uses the red at the top of the right on the top of the rail and nudges it in and leaves us, leaves him snookered. But he's got to get there first. He's got to. He's not got a simple clearance here. He's got to pot a few first. Well, he's always been a fantastic combination shot player. I mean, come from predominantly the the black ball game. He could play the loss of turn now. He wouldn't leave much. Yeah, I think for me he's going to drop this in the middle, run up to the top rail and play this, play it there. Because he can snooker him at the same time. Maybe he is playing the skill shot. Won't be playing it now, I wouldn't imagine. No. All I can think of here is he's just trick he's gonna just snick off the red. Yeah. Good shot. Has is he left that a half big a pocket? pocket? Here? I'm gonna say, has he left out of a pocket here? Is that a big that's, pocket? That's having a look. If he's left this, he'll be absolutely fuming. I think he's left this, you know. He's, he's giving it the shape. Look, yeah, he's, oh, he's fuming. I think he's left this. Oh, he's got away with one there, Scott Gillespie. Yeah, he has. He knew it as well. He's got away with one big time. It wasn't an easy shot for Matt Brealy. Let's not get it twisted. It, it was still very difficult. But the fact that he even had a shot should not have been the case. Just a bit of insurance for Scott with that yellow position where it is. So pressure's off here, you'd think, to move 6-3 in front. It's a big frame in the match as well. That difference between 5-4 and 6-3, huge. it is on Saturday for a spot in the Masters semi-final eight ball in motion yellow down as he got an opening shot full teapot for Scott Gillespie I'm not sure he does no and even if he has it's not a lovely layout is it problems on both colour sets got yellow to the middle I think he can snip this red back as well. So just stops for the containing safety. Doesn't need to be aggressive at this point, Scott. He's much in the uh, position that Matt Brealy found himself in against Gareth Potts, wasn't he? Just take your time, don't do anything rash. Matt's, Matt's got to be the aggressor. Yeah, and he's going to be. Matt Brealy says it's time to go. Can't blame him, but it's tough. 
He's got an angle straight away to the bottom right of the table here to bump out his bad yellow, his bad red rather. Oh, that's a nice kiss. Yeah, I'm not, I don't think the red goes, so still got work to do. But that's got the angle here to move the red. If I was going to say, I think he can screw straight back into it here, can't he? Well, he can either screw into it or he could play it off the top cushion. Coming off on and off the top cushion, but. Trouble is, if he catches this wrong, I think this is why he's going to screw it. I'm going to say if he, if he was to play it with top, the screw shot was harder. But if he plays it with top, he could have come behind it and and snooked himself behind the yellow. So as mad as it sounds, it could that that could have been a shot. So now he's really got work to do. He's digging now. Oh, I don't think he's got a shot. No, and there's there's no certainty. I think he can get through to the red. At, the, the double. The red. Well, this is a huge shot. Maybe even a treble. This could be the tournament on the line for him here. Just a safety. Well. <sighs> How safe is it? It's pretty safe. I mean, he's left a long yellow for, for Scott. Not any, by no stretch of imagination do I expect Scott, Scott Gillespie to go on and clear up here, but stranger things have happened. Oh, they absolutely have. Scott's been part of some mad matches in his ultimate pool career. He's not often been on the right side of those mad moments either. He'd love to not have to put himself through that again and keep it simple, keep things in his control. Good first pot, goes into his problem, goes in off. How would you like those apples? Risky. Very risky, because now you've just gifted Matt really a lifeline. Oh, cue ball in hand, picked his perfect pot, and it stays up. Those pots were flying down the rail and into the heart of the pocket earlier on against Gareth Potts. It's not quite been as simple in this match for Matt Brearley. But it's not quite as simple for Scott Gillespie either. Yeah, it's gone a bit edgy, hasn't it? And just to add a little bit of spice onto that, 15 second shot clock, soon come. Yeah. Matt kills it in. He's played that really well. Red. No, his plan was to move it. Issue with that plan is where are you moving it to? Does it go now? I don't, don't think it does. No, he's, he's got a big shot to play here really sure what he can do. He could potentially screw off the red and pot the yellow, but you s the odds of you leaving nothing are very, very low. Back double, shot. Oh, what a shot that is. What a big shot to pull out from that, really. Just when he needed it. Oh, didn't he just? Yeah, the red will go back on the table. Well, I think, <laughs> I mean, it was that far in the pocket. <laughs> well, the trouble with these shots is when they are so far in the pocket like that, 
you've got to cue them really well to get back out because any sort of side on this and you, you, you're going to come into the contact with the jaw. So and the, the eight ball is, he's going to have to trap back up the table. Big shot needed. And well, it's it'll do. Yeah, he's on it. It's not easy, this. This is thin. You expect him to get it, but this has to go. And go it does. Oh, that eight ball was moving. Eight ball was moving. Trouble is, nothing else has gone. Just when you thought the momentum was swinging, he goes dry. Tough one to take for Matt Brearley. 15 second shot clock. Now fully in the game. Scott Gillespie at the table looking to go on the hill. Slowed up in time. Very good visit to the table so far from Scott Gillespie. Not necessarily known for these fiddly little finishes, cute cue ball and all the rest of it, but it's not to say he's not got it in the locket when required. That's a lovely shot. Just let's be careful with this one. Wants to put it on the thick side, hold the cue ball. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, that dry break could have been. Really, his last shot of the tournament. Got to say, Scott Gillespie's been fantastic tonight. Really has stood out. <coughs> if he is to go on and win from here, he's much deserved. So, go on, Steve, I'm going to put you on the spot. Which match are you looking forward to most out of those ones that we've got confirmed on Saturday? 7-4, OK, on the spot. Yeah, I think John John and Jake will be a great match. I really yeah. do, because I think both of them will go into it thinking the, that they're the favourite. I, yeah. I genuinely do. I think that neither one of them will think, actually, yeah, the other one's got an advantage of me. Here. You could you could arguably pick a favourite from each match, couldn't you? But I, I genuinely think that, yes, all right, John Rowe will be favourite on paper. He's a professional pool player, uh, you know, got much more experience on this table than Jake Dillon Newlove. For me, it just depends how John starts because yeah. he's been a historically slow starter and even in, in the two groups that he's qualified through, he's needed that first match where he's not played particularly well just to get through it, settle in. And once he's done that, he's played two fabulous matches against Craig Waddingham and Shane Thompson to knock them both out, who are, of course, two of the best players in the world. So for if you're a John fan... I think you need him to to turn up a little bit earlier, and because uh, Jake will be bang up for that one, and maybe won't give him the sorts of opportunities that John's previous opponents have in those early matches. Yeah, absolutely. that'll do for Matt. Really, I think that's lovely. Yeah, we'll do this match. Isn't over yet, folks? It's got Gillespie dry break. Not quite in position yet. This is thin back to the middle. So I don't think he's going to be able to hold on this red on the, on the bottom rail. Oh, he's missed it. He's missed it. Cue ball's safe-ish, but this might just yellow to the middle. So this could be this could be it now. From that, really. You'd expect so. 
Scott calls his extension just to work out its route. Get the feeling if this goes, the rest will follow. Heart of the pocket. Yeah, it's going to be. I mean, he's all right. He's, he's still in great shape here. It's just got to get onto this yellow below the eight ball. Should be fine. Yeah, it goes comfortable bottom left, and then you've got the eight ball waiting to right centre. Yeah, you'd be just shocked. Wants, just wants to be straight on it. Yeah, he's fine. Oh, he's going to take off the table now. Oh, he won't know. I think he wanted to next. I don't think he likes it as his last ball. That's twice now he's tried to land on it. Well, if he makes this, he's going to have a choice of two yellows. Well, he's not gone. Yeah, he didn't want to take it there because he was running into the eight ball. And... I d really don't think he likes the look of it as his last ball, but he's got no choice. Yeah, and he's the wrong side of this yellow, so he's going to have to play this with a lot of right-hand side. Check the cue ball back up, then bring it back down this side of the table. Yeah, yeah play it well. it well. This is cash ball. Make this here into the quarter-final. Out of the pocket. Scott Gillespie runs through Carl Sutton and Matt Brearley and books his quarter-final ticket to face our fan dad in the last eight. A couple of happy campers in the Scots corner. Super performance tonight from Goobsy.